I want to talk to you about what I refer to as the bubble effect. So most good quality sites have a level or a bubble in them. Most people see them and they know that they have a purpose, but not everyone really knows what that purpose is. Or more importantly, is that bubble set up correctly to where if I'm using it, I'm actually benefiting from the use. Now the importance of that bubble is simple. If I just make it as basic as possible, here's kind of what you need to know. Your arrow is typically going to follow the direction that your top of your bow is leaning. So if your bow is perfectly vertical and up and down, your arrow is going to track true to the target. If you have a slight lean to the right, then your arrow, depending on how much you've canted or leaned your bow, your arrow will start to fade that way. Same as if you cant or lean to the left. So this is actually a technique that top level archers have learned to use in order to play variable wind conditions at outdoor events. So I had to spend a lot of time in practice measuring the wind and knowing at 70 meters, if I have a five mile an hour crosswind, I actually, instead of adjusting my sight, which again, in a variable wind condition, I might not want to move my sight because if the wind starts to calm down for my next end, well, now I've got to remember how many clicks I move my sight. I got to go back to center, shoot, and then if the wind picks up midway, you just don't want to be doing that. So if you have variable winds and you practice, you can learn how your bubble can actually help guide that arrow into the ten ring, regardless of that variable blowing on the arrow. So for me, if I was at 70 meters and had a five mile an hour crosswind, for my particular arrow and a lot of the setups that I shot at the time, instead of me giving my bow three clicks, I could actually just lean my bubble and touch it on the opposite line inside of that level. And I was canting just enough to where if there wasn't wind, I would be impacting that target just on the outer edge of the scoring ring. But because of the wind, I was able to land in the center. And then obviously you learn what a half bubble does or getting your bubble all the way out. Now, other than using it for those types of situations, for a bow hunter or for someone that's shooting at target events, how your bubble is set up is absolutely critical to accuracy. So if you think about what I just told you based on what I would do in a tournament situation to let that arrow fade into the center of the target and literally canting my bow into the wind so that I could judge that drift into the center of the target, it shows you that your arrow is going to follow that top limb. So let's say that your sight isn't set up correctly. If your sight isn't set up correctly, then what happens is it actually gives you a reading. And when you try to level it, even though you think you're leveling it, you actually aren't. So there's two things that are very commonly talked about in setting up your sight or setting up your level. And what you're going to hear the most is if your sight has the correct second axis adjustment or third axis adjustment. So let's talk about second axis adjustment first. Second, second axis adjustment is essentially how the level of your scope is matched with a true level that's fit perfectly at a 90 on your bow or on your riser. So in this case, this device that I have here is one that I've used a lot of times to preset up sites. Now there's different ones on the market and there's, there's honestly different ones that are a little bit more in depth because there's some that measure this while you're at full draw with your bow. And the reason that's important is because of variation in how you torque your bow or your hand position 
is going to change that level as well. And it, for some people, it's something that must be measured. However, for this video and talking to the majority of the people that I know are watching, I'm going to just say if you set it up properly in a stationary position, you're going to be way further ahead than just taking your sight out of the box and putting it on your bow and trying to do second and third adjustment while you're at full draw or while you're paying attention to your setup at full draw. Doing it here is a very, very good starting point. And if your technique is how it should be based on following school and knock, I'm pretty confident that this is going to be enough to get you by because if I'm honest, this is all I've ever done for 95% of my career because I want to minimize front torque and front hand position anyway. So if I have my bow square in this place, then I've been fine everywhere else. So second axis is when you have a level that is 90 degrees from the vertical inside of your riser. So in this case, on this device, we have a perfectly centered level right here representing this sight mounted onto my bow. Now what you'll find is right now that level in my sight is actually pretty dang close to where it needs to be. Now every sight has a different variation at setting the second axis. And the second axis is making sure that your scope bubble or your sight bubble mirrors that bubble that is on your bow. And again, there's several different devices out there that can help you level your sight. Um, so I'm just going to just make this second axis adjustment now on this site, and I'm just going to kind of show you how it's going to affect what the bubble on my site does. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to loosen up this second axis, and for this particular site, if you loosen one side but tighten the other, it'll start to adjust the cant of your sight in order to mirror what you need to do to adjust. So you can see here, if I make turns like this, well, now you can see th this bubble that should be square to my bow now is not matching that bubble that is in my front scope. The front scope bubble is actually off to the side. Now, the other thing that people talk about is third axis adjustment. Now third axis adjustment is if you have your arrow running through your bow, so let's just say this is your arrow running through your bow, the third axis adjustment is adjusting your scope this way so that the level here is perfectly square with your arrow shaft. And the pretty much the center line of your bow. So to show you what happens with that, right now I actually have my second axis and my third axis. They're not accurate. So as I would raise this up, so if I mimicked shooting uphill, this level has now gone all the way off to this side over here. Now as I would lower this down, and start to shoot a downhill shot, the level starts to go even further over, which is what's gonna happen when my second axis isn't correct. Now let's get my second axis correct here quick. I'm gonna make this quick adjustment to level up my second axis. And then I'm going to show you what a third axis does if it's not set properly. Okay, so right now I've got centered second axis, centered third axis, or centered, centered uh, square, centered scope, which is a second axis. Okay, now if I start to shoot an uphill shot, this level quickly shoots off to the right. Okay, so if this level shoots off that direction, now what we would do as archers is we would 
tip our bow like this in order to level your scope, which you think is perfectly accurate. However, what you're going to be doing uphill is you're going to have to tip your limb this way so that your bow's level. And so which direction is your arrow going to go shooting uphill versus shooting flat? It's going to go the direction your top limb is now tilting. Top limb has to tilt that way because you're doing it to level your bow. Your arrows are going to hit this way. Now what happens when we decide to shoot downhill when your third axis is incorrect? As soon as you start to point downhill, you can see even right here on a matter of a few degrees, the bubble has gone all the way to the left side. If I took it to the edge of the table and dropped it at a 45, representing the type of shot you'd make in a tree stand, now the bubble would be all the way this way, which then means if it's all the way that way, now you have to tip this this way in order to shoot downhill and have a leveled bow, which would mean your arrows would, again, follow that top limb tilt, and you would impact this direction shooting downhill. So you're hitting this way uphill, shooting this way downhill, simply because that variation in your third axis adjustment is causing that bubble to slide one way when pointing uphill and another way when pointing downhill, thus giving you variation imp impact from flat ground to uphill to downhill. And it's extremely frustrating if you don't pay attention to it. So for this particular site, the third axis is a pretty easy adjustment. It's actually these two screws right here, which it's on a rocker. And you can kind of see that I've purposely set this third axis incorrectly, which is what was given us those instant readings. So you can see that this front level is actually tipped like this. So it's not perfectly parallel. So in order to perfectly get it that way, we're just going to make these adjustments here. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the one side. And you can see as I'm backing out the one screw, the scope, instead of being cockeyed like this, now it's starting to rock, it's starting to come back to center. But I will have to snug down the other one. So I've made a little bit of an adjustment there. Let me go back down to center. And if you have made that adjustment, you probably want to just double check your second axis. So I'm going to move this around a lot. I'm going to double check my second axis. And I'm actually pretty darn close. So for the purpose of this video, let's just leave that right where it's at. But now that I've made that third axis adjustment, when I point this uphill like this, you can see that my bubble is still within the lines. And as I tip it downhill, I'm dead center. So those simple adjustments have got me close, but you want them to be perfect. So when you wonder what the bubble effect is, it predetermines how you have to cant your bow when you're facing uphill or downhill when it's set improperly. And what will happen is you're just always going to shoot off one direction when shooting uphill, always shoot off a different direction when you're shooting downhill versus how you're shooting when you're on flat ground. Now, what I'll challenge you to do before I end this video is take a look at the site that you're using and one, make sure that it has the ability to make these adjustments. But also, if you look directly over the top of your bow so that you're kind of looking at your sight from this view, if you notice that it's cockeyed like this off to the side, then you're already going to know how your third axis is going to be affected when pointing one direction versus the other. Without mentioning certain names, I know that there are certain products out there that are actually popular, but there's some issues with how they tighten down that cause them to get a little bit cockeyed 
and it affects people's accuracy in incline and decline shooting. Some of the sites that are more robust and certainly sites that are made by companies that are very specific target archers, they understand the importance of not only the durability of the site and the gearing in the site, but they also focus on the importance of ease of adjustment to properly level your site. This is something that you should always do whenever you take a site out of the package. You can do a little bit of research and find several different types of site leveling devices and all of them are going to put you more in the middle regardless of whether you're shooting uphill in the mountains or downhill from a tree stand.